Hey, what's up, everybody? Now, before we get into the show, just want to let you know that we redesigned our entire main YouTube page. That's youtube.com slash Daily. Yeah, check it out. If you're watching on there now, you see me right over here. Over there, you got a Facebook link and a Twitter link. Go to Facebook, like us, Twitter, follow us, and make sure you subscribe. That button is right up here, too. All right, just letting you know. Do you like it? Let us know in the comments if you like it or not. If you don't, I don't care. Let's move on. On to the news. Toyota's new Lamar prototype. Yeah, that's right. Also, FLD shows you which cars are the biggest selling fail fails. Some dude in the UK needs to move on with his life. We got some pictures, some, some pictures of the new Ford Fusion stock car. And of course, hump day girl of the week. What's up, everybody? I'm Derek D, and this is Fast Lane Daily. And there's stuff written on here. You see that? It's not a blank piece of paper. Oh, and you may see some buildings behind me. That's actually what it looks like out of one of our windows over here. That's going to change from time to time. You can actually kind of see the Empire State Building up there. Anyway, moving on. Some of you may have been a little bummed out since Peugeot announced they're leaving Le Mans for 2012. Well, guess what? Good news. Peugeot is back. They are bringing racing back. Right, guys? A little hangover member from the move? Okay. Actually, I'm lying. I'm sorry to get your hopes up. They really did leave, but with death comes new life. Not for Peugeot, though. This story is about to be about Toyota. It's Toyota's brand new hybrid endurance prototype, the TS-030. Now, you may be asking, what's so great about the TS-030, Derek D? Well, I'll tell you what's so great about it. It's the first LMP1 racer to use a hybrid drivetrain. That's right. That means the system couples a 3.4 liter V8 to one of two potential electric motor setups, a front-mounted system developed by A's and AW, or a rear-mounted one from Denso. Rear-mounted, huh? All right. It's all kind of complex, but all you need to know is that it's cool technology. Plain and simple, it's cool, all right? We'll see the first car in the six hours of Spa Francorchamps. Did I say that right? Francorchamps. 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 Oh, home. Which is the second round of the FIA World Endurance Championship. I don't know, I kind of like to just say it how it's spelled. Franker Champs. I'm going to go so American with it. Derek D. Champs. Derek D. Angles. All right. Franker Champs. Franker Champs. Franco Champs. All right. Commenters, yell at me for that. And now time for a very special FLD report. Okay. <laughs> for a while, we've been kind of making fun of EVs and their failing sales, like the Leaf and Volt. But you know what? We should have been making fun of an even worse selling segment of cars. Premium hybrids like the Infiniti M35H, BMW Active Hybrids, etc., etc. For all the ad dollars thrown at these $40,000 plus dollar models, no one is apparently buying them. I mean, I'm just going to throw out some numbers here for you guys for vehicle sales in December of 2011. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? Come on. I'm hoping for a big energetic, yeah. Terrible. All right, here we go. Ultima Hybrid, 34 sold. BMW X6 Hybrid, 3 sold. Chevy Malibu Hybrid, guess how many, AK? None. None sold, you're right. Lexus GS450H, 34 sold. 34, huh? All right, okay. Mercedes ML450 Hybrid, big fat goose egg, zero sold. None. Yes. I mean, I could go on and on here, but I think you guys get the point. No one is spending the extra dough on an already expensive ass car. I mean, think about it. If you've got the bread for these luxury cars anyway, what's the extra money in gas to you? Even though gas is going up a lot, but still, if you got the cash, it doesn't matter. People aren't going to buy your hoity-toity premium hybrids when affordable companies like Hyundai, Ford, Kia, Honda, etc. are pulling out affordable cars that look good, get great gas mileage, and have all kinds of cool technology in them. So get over yourselves, premium hybrids, because some of you don't even get the same gas mileage of strictly gas engine cars, or petrol, as you folks across the pond would say. All right, it's my little rant right there. Moving on, here's something a bit more entertaining. So for anyone who has their license or is about to get their license, you know that really annoying written test you have to take before the driving test, right? You guys know about that? Of course. Well, it's understandable if you failed it at first. You know, maybe you didn't study, or maybe you didn't even care, whatever. 
Hey, maybe even failed it twice. Fine, I can, I'm gonna deal with that. Although in my opinion, the test is not hard. No one should ever fail it, okay? Well, how about failing it 92 times? Yes, that is a nine and a two. There's a 28-year-old failure of a man in the UK who has accomplished such a feat, and again, this is before even getting behind the wheel for the driving part of the licensing test. More fun data. The test takes an hour. So that means this dude has spent almost, uh, what, four days of his life taking this damn test. Also, it's cost him about 2,850 English pounds in test taking fees. I mean, really? At this point, just give up on driving and start working on some fundamentals. I don't know, maybe remembering your name, reciting the alphabet, figuring out if you may be mentally challenged. I mean, come on, 92 times? I don't think I want to be on the same road as a dude who has failed one of the easiest tests 92 friggin' times, okay? I feel for you, United Kingdom. If you see a guy swerving on the road, don't assume he's drunk. Assume he's Mr. 92, all right? That's just my little public service announcement to you guys. 92 times for a written test. How many did it take you? Once. Once. Cat, one time. How about you, AK? The written test, once. Once. What about you, Ian? One time. One time. Me, one time. JF? I never took it. He never took the written test. He's above the, really? <laughs> oh, real quick, you guys want to see uh, some shots of the 2013 Ford Fusion stock car? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Boom, here's one. Here's another. And here's another angle. Look at that front, very Aston Martin y, I'd have to say. Very Aston Martin y, but I like it. And it's also Wednesday, you guys know what that means. Huh? It's Wednesday? It's Wednesday? It's hump day girl of the week, all right? Who is it, you ask, right? Did someone just ask who is it? Boom frame, Georgia Salpa, a model who is Greek and Irish. Quite the combo indeed. She moved to Ireland when she was four, so that means this chick has a smoking hot Irish accent as well. Does it get any better? Yes, it does. She apparently has two sisters, so that means there's more of these running around. You hear that, Ireland? You better. Georgia Salpa. Looking salpalicious indeed. Thanks to Bobby Balmoose for the Hump Day Girl of the Week suggestion. Bobby Balmoose is the dude's name. If I pronounced it wrong, I'm sorry, but it looks like Balmoose. Balmoose? <laughs> I don't know. Balmoose. Balmoose. Bobby Balmoose. Maybe it's William. William Balmoose. That is his name. All right, we just gave you a good shout out. There you go. Appreciate you guys watching. That'll do it for Fast Lane Daily today. I'm Derek D. Make sure you hit up our Facebook and Twitter and subscribe right here on YouTube, okay? Subscribe button's up here, it's over there. We want to hit 100,000 subscribers by next week. 100,000 subscribers by next week. Right, Josh? He's got his headphones on, he can't hear me. Sweet, talk to you guys tomorrow. So Derek D, we just spent $3,000 importing this fabulous desk from Italy. We didn't spend $3,000. Come